So the project we're going to do now is actually um, the last, one of the last big tutorials in this series where I'm going to try to make a Super Mario based game based on the Asteroids uh, game. So it's pretty much the same as the Asteroids, we're just going to make it into a platform game and this is the first time I'm doing it. So it's going to be interesting to see how well I'm able to program this in one go. So what I'm thinking, sort of like drafting right now, is something that looks like this. We have the we have the screen, like that, and then we have some ball that represents a player, and then there should be some some blocks that somehow you kind of collide with and jump over. So there's some like random sizes of blocks, and then you have to kind of navigate this landscape of blocks. So this is in like the simple concept here. So this is the first step, it should look like something like this. And then maybe we're gonna add a, a little bit more to it. So there's like a side, so it scrolls to the side. So the level is bigger than the screen. And then the screen can kind of move to the side as we go along. So how do we do this? Well, it's basically the same as asteroids, except we are now making some different classes. So the basic structure is the same as we have already done. We have a white draw and a white, oh, and setup should be in the top. Um, and then we have a size, and we are gonna do, I don't know, 500 times 500, and then here the first thing we do is just to say background zero because we wanna clear the background. So this is kind of our basic setup, and the first thing we want is actually a ball. And uh, just to remind you, the way to make a ball is like we have, or the player, that's the player, but it's just a round ball in this case. And just to remind you about it, and then you need some properties, and the properties would be like float x equals zero, and float y equals zero, and then we need a float speed y, and that equals zero, and then we need a float speed x, that equals zero. But since this is actually, I mean, we can just as well make a class for it because then we kind of work with the class object uh, paradigm and the dot notation. So to do this, I'm going to convert this, these ball properties into a class. And it's actually uh, very simple because what I can do is just to write class and then write ah, ball is kind of boring player. And then I'm actually have actually turned turned this group of variables into a class. So it's not more complicated than that. I can of course put it into a tab here, say new tab and then call it player. I'm just going to leave it here. And then we have to remember that the first letter in a class should be uh, capitalized. And then we need another one which is the kind of the blocks in our game, the blocks we're going to jump on. So the blocks will have a float x position that is equal to zero, a float y position that is equal to zero. Then it will have a width, because we need a width of the, of the blocks here, and we need some height as well, I'm assuming, yeah, we need a height as well. So, we need a width, and then we need a float height, and it has to be zero. So that's basically it for the blocks. And since we also need multiple, oh, for this one we especially need to make it into a class so we can have multiple objects because we have one object, two objects, three objects, four objects and so forth. So let's do that. We're going to turn it into a class. So we're going to say class and then we're just going to call it block because it's kind of a block we're going to jump on and then we're going to experiment with how the blocks are going to be positioned later on. So now we have two classes, and again, I'm forgetting to make the first letter capitalized like this. So now we have two classes. Uh, one class, we need multiple objects, multiple blocks, and one class, we just need one player at the moment. So for the one player part of it, it's actually uh, simplest because we only need one. It's simplest just to make one player. Um, what should we call it? Selected player, current player, my player? The player, the player. Okay, so player, we're gonna make a, a object of a player that's called the player, and we're gonna say equals to a new player. So now we have kind of a player to play around with, like that. But then for the blocks, we have the problem that we need multiple blocks. So for to have multiple blocks, we actually need to. Um, uh, have an array list or some kind of list and if we use an array we can have we can only have a certain amount a fixed amount but with array list we can kind of add and remove so it's kind of more 
kind of generic and flexible in the future. It takes up a little bit more memory maybe, I don't know. So if we use an array list, it would look like this. Um, and then we're gonna define the type of array list and that is like that. And that will be a block and we will call it uh, blocks because it's multiple blocks, it's a list of blocks. And then we say new array list and then we define what type and that's a block and then we say we don't have any param parameters to start this up and my problem here is I forget the big capitalized B so we're gonna change that and then we have like a list so now we have kind of a, a list of blocks or a list we can put blocks in right now it's empty there's nothing in the blocks list right now it's an empty blocks list and we have one player that's created this one is not empty because we have made a new player here where here we only created a list, we have made a new array list, but we haven't added the blocks yet. So the question is, uh, what to do next? Well, I mean, first of all, I think we're just gonna, first of all, we need to test it just to see if it actually runs. Okay, so it runs, but it's kind of boring, nothing happens yet, so we need to kind of play around with our data. And the reason nothing happens yet is because the only thing we're actually drawing on the screen now is background zero. So we're just clearing the screen. That's all we're doing right now. So the first thing I want to do is actually to draw the player, to make the player present in the game. And the way I want to do this is by adding a method. So this is a method that is a, one of the standard methods in, a, in, a, in processing. And we can, of course, add methods down here where we can say la 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 something but I want to add a method that is enclosed inside each player object and each block object. So I want to kind of say the parts that has something to do with a specific uh, type is actually the methods for that should be inside the class of that. So if you take player, we need a draw for that one. I would say void draw, and then I will call it draw me. And this is only to make sure that it's not confused with the draw we have down here because if it's the same name, draw me and draw here, then, um, then you might get confused because it turns blue and then suddenly you don't know which one is which. So I'm just gonna say draw me. I don't like me, but it's the best idea I have right now. And I wanna draw the player and since it's just an ellipse because we are making a simple example here, we can say ellipse x dot y uh, the position and then we want the size and we are gonna have, I don't know specify size as well just to be able to use the math for that one later on so we're gonna say size 20 and then I'm gonna say size and size in the width and the height of the ellipse and then actually if I call this draw me it will draw the object at this you know specific position for that object so and the reason we don't write uh, the player here or something like that is because that's where you have to kind of get to know your scopes. We are inside the player class. And since that means that X here will, the first X it will find is this one. So the reference to this X will always be this X as long as we have this structure as we have here. And the same with Y and size and size. All right, so let's draw the, the player. So. I cannot say player dot draw me because then I'm actually making a reference to the class, the class player, but cla class player doesn't exist as an actual object. So it doesn't make sense in this case. What makes sense is actually to reference to the object of the class, which is the player. So we have to say the player dot draw me and then we should get a circle up here in the corner because right now we have position X and Y here are zero and zero, so it's in the corner. And the size 20 is because, uh, uh, the size of this circle is 20 because we have set 20 here. So that's how we have defined it. And what this enables us to do is actually to kind of use the dot notation. So let's say in setup, I actually wanna define the player to have another size. I can say player.size equals 40 and then we will have a much bigger player. So the default value up here will be overwritten when we run the program because in setup we will say, actually I want it to be the size 40 or maybe I want it to grow. So every, for every frame it grows, that would look something like this. Plus size, plus one. 
and then you know it will start slowly glow, grow. So if you want to make a player that grows in size every time it eats a, a enemy or something, it gets bigger. That's you know the basic concept of doing that. In this case, I just want it to not grow at all. So we got our player now, and it's it's um, it's kind of boring. So first of all, I just want to move it a little bit in because it annoys me that I cannot see it. So this is just to have it start a little bit further in. So now it starts here. And then I guess the first thing would be to just create the gravity thing and the navigation thing. So I wanted to move around and jump around and kind of make a collision with the, with the ground. Let's say the bottom of the screen is the ground, then I can make the block part later on and add that to it and figure out how to make that collision happen. So if we take this part here, well, we will need it to kind of drop somehow. So um, I can make a wide uh, move and then I have to say move me, move. I'm just gonna say move. I really don't like the me here. I don't know how to, what would be a better alternative to. Like show? Show, show, yeah, show, 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 show is good. I right, buy show. Show, show, show. Good. So, um, move. All right, so we actually, f to get this to move, we actually want to, uh, for each time we call move, we want the X and Y values to change so it moves. And the way to do that is just what we have done many times now is saying x equals x plus speed x, uh, y equals y plus speed y. So now it will actually move. If I give it a value here, no, it won't move yet because we still have one problem. I'm not calling move. I'm not saying it actually should move. So we need to say the player dot move. And then when we run it, it will actually start moving around. Okay, that's that's a start, that's something. So I right now I just want it to be zero, so when it starts, it will be zero. And then I want to do some gravity thing to it as well. So gravity, the simplest way to do gravity, as, as we kind of have been reading up on it a little bit, and the simplest way to do it is just to acknowledge that this ground is some ultimate size and we don't need to kind of do the whole uh, big uh, 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 gravity laws thing but we will just say uh, y, y axis is down so it's something with down and since we're starting up here zero is here so it's actually increasing so we're adding to speed y for each frame we need to add something to speed y um, speed y plus 0.3 and then it's a good habit to write F because it's a float. It's, I don't know, Java, I don't think it's that important. So now it's falling down. All right, then we have the problem now that there's nothing, nothing is colliding down here. It's not colliding, it's just falling down and there's nothing here to bounce it with. So we need to get it to bounce somehow. And that's actually to looking out for when uh, the Y uh, is hitting this point here then we need to change the direction of the energy. So that means that's like a bounce. We want to make a bounce. And changing the direction of the energy is just changing speed y to um, a minus or plus, depending on which direction it comes from and what it hits. And this point here is the height of the screen. So we can basically say if uh, y is uh, larger than height, then we want speed y to be equal to speed y times minus one. So that should create a bounce. Let's see. So now we have a bouncy thing here. And this is a world where there's no loss of energy. It will bounce forever because, actually it will, be, it will go bigger, which is bad. <laughs> I have to read off on my physics. That's because it will actually accelerate, accelerate the here. Okay, we are just gonna quick and dirty it out of it. So we're just gonna make the bounce way smaller. Uh, uh oh. Then we have the problem with the the direction of this, and I don't remember how to solve that. Let's try this and see if it does it. I also have to move it in. I don't want to move it in. I wanna. I want it to not move in. 
So the problem here is that it doesn't have enough uh, kind of speed to jump out of the zero point scenario. So what it does is it's kind of stuck and bouncing inside it. Yeah, that might be a good solution for it. Do we want to do it that way? Yeah, okay, let's do it that way. It doesn't always work, but it's better. No, no, no. I, I want to do it another way. So, so what I can do is actually to say, I can constrain X and say X should be, but then we have the problems when the collision of objects appears. Plus, okay, we're going to do this. Might be okay. Is it plus or minus? No, 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 no. We wanna, we wanna, um, we wanna constrain it. So no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like this. I think this is a pretty safe way to do it. I'm not sure, but I should be able to say constrain the y between the zero and the height. And maybe I have to move it up a little bit. Let's see if that solves the problem. Yeah. So now I have a ball that bounces right on the bottom of the screen and doesn't, it cannot, it cannot run outside of the screen. So we have a situation where was, if Y is, is above the height of the screen, then I say stay within the screen, please. So it's not, it doesn't run over the screen as we saw before. And then it doesn't get struck, uh, stuck. So constraint basically says, says take the y variable and make sure it's between zero and height. So if it's too much here, we'll move it up. If it's too much up here, we'll move it down. That's basically what it does. Good. So now we have kind of the y axis. We have kind of this energy thing. But then we need to move it around with the keyboard and we need to kind of be able to jump. So it's something about A and D to move left and right and W to jump. That's, that's what I'm thinking is kind of the structure of this. And best practice is to use key pressed to do this because then you can work with multiple keys instead of just use... Um, you can also uh, make an if statement here and say key pressed and stuff like that, but then you have the problem that you cannot handle multiple keys, so we like to do it this way. Key released. Um, so in key pressed, we have to check on something. We can say we want to jump. So if key equals W, which is our jump key, then we want to do something here. And what we need to give it is some energy. So we were going to say speed Y, do something, jump in any some way. And here notice that I don't add the key pressed inside the class player because I want this to be separated. There's the difference between the, um, the player and the input. But I'm actually doing something sloppiness here by saying speed Y to make it jump. So uh, uh, actually I want to do something else. I want to make it pretty. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add a method here called jump. And then, because then the logic of what it means to jump is inside the player class. So in here, I'm going to say speed y equals speed y. Uh, do I want to say equals speed y? Yeah, no. I just want to, I want to make it a simple world. So when you jump, you jump in a specific amount. Um, and it has to be minus three, I guess. So down here, all I'm going to do is say the player dot jump. So I'm just going to call the method jump inside the player. And that is going to make it jump, hopefully. Let's see if I got it right. Yeah, we got a jump, but I can jump multiple times. I'm not supposed to be able to do that. And the jump is kind of low. We want to jump more. 10, let's jump. That depends also on the levels and the sizes of obstacles. OK, that's a lot. Ah. Yeah, five. So one problem we have now is that it's actually, I can jump multiple times, so I can jump in the air. I become, I don't know, some super villain Batman kind of thing that can kind of walk in the sky and stuff like that. Superman might be the right guy to talk about. And I don't want that. I want it to be, I can only jump when I hit the ground, when I'm on the ground. And the simplest way, the problem is we are bouncing, so we are not really on the ground that much. It's very rare that we are right straight on the ground. We'll be actually bouncing a little bit all the time. So... The way to solve this and the best practice I've found so far is when you hit the ground, 
you actually set a variable saying, hey, I hit the ground, now I'm allowed to have one token of jump, one jump. I'm allowed to jump once, and that's it. And the way I do that is I say, uh, say boolean jump OK, and then I say uh, false. And then down here in the move, this is where I hit the ground right now. That's when I hit the ground. I say jump OK is equals to true. And then in the jump section, I say if jump OK equals true, then jump. And then I say jump OK equals false. So this is a little trick to kind of set one flag. OK, I've hit the ground once now. And after I've hit the ground once, then I can jump once. Uh, now, after I hit the ground, I can jump once. I get a, like a flag saying, yeah, you're okay to jump. And when I then call the jump method, it's gonna check, it, I, am I okay to jump? Yes, I'm okay to jump. Set the speed to mean, minus five, which means give some energy that points upwards. And then set the jump to okay to false, which means now I'm not allowed to jump anymore until I hit the ground again. So what this means is that I can jump, but I cannot, no matter how hard I hit, I can only jump once I hit the ground. So this is kind of a simple trick to make sure that I don't get in that situation that I can multi-jump. Um, good, so now we need to keep press to the left and right. And to do this, um, we need to get the keys right. So in key pressed, if key equals A, that means going to the left, then we need to say, um, do I want to make a method for that? Uh, no, not right now. I'm not sure. We're just going to do this. And that's not the speed. Yeah, that's the speed. And then we set the speed to moving that way, that's uh, to the left, that's uh, minus one. And then we say if key equals uh, D, then we go the other way, plus one for the X axis. And then in key released, it's the opposite. We want to stop it because else we are going to be running all the time because it's only key pressed is only used when we press down the key, but not when we are releasing it. So now I can move back and forth. I can move one way, but not what happened there. Oh, there was some focus loss. Okay, so I can control it, but I, when I let go of the, all the keys, it's still kind of running. So we don't have the kind of ideal scenario that it stops when I let go of the keys. So we have to kind of do the same thing here. And since this is the same action we have to do, we just have to stop the x-axis, we can actually just combine it into one. So we can say if the key D is released or the key um, A is released, then we just set speed to zero. And right now processing is somehow deciding I have to select everything. Okay, thank you processing. Good, so if we do this, it bounces and I'm not allowed to do anything. Oh, I have to, oh yeah. So now I can move it around. Ah, that's actually, yeah, that is actually an interesting problem. Okay, well, it works. So now we have a little player here, ball running around and bouncing and jumping and stuff like that. And now the next trick is then to kind of get the obstacles, the, the level to work. And that's where the blocks come in. So the block, we have the blocks here, but we're not doing anything yet. I mean, one, one comment to notice here is now the player is getting so big that I actually want to put it into a tab. It's so big that it kind of takes up a lot of space and I, kind of like to have it in a new, then I would like to have it in a new tab. So I'm just gonna copy it over here. It's, it's completely the same I'm doing. I've just moved into another tab. So my structure of my program becomes better. I just wanna save it because it's very risky to write this much code without saving. It's a very bad habit. And it was only because I'm video recording. I don't wanna spend too much time on this. Um, what should it be called? It should be called Mayo level basic. All right, so the block, 
the block has some positions and here we have the problem that the blocks, we need that array list, we need to use the array list of blocks. So we need to kind of create our level and of course it would be super awesome with, if we had like programs, some nice program where we can design our levels and make like cool levels. Here we're just going to make the simplest way where we're going to kind of make a generator that randomly generates the level we add. And to do so we need to create a lot of blocks and, and kind of put them on the screen on a, on a row. And uh, to do this we need to have um, and make a for loop and uh, we need to figure out how many times we will, how many blocks we will make so I'm just gonna make a kind of a variable called num blocks and I'm gonna make 20 blocks for now and then we'll see how that works. So a for loop consists of, um, uh, we need a counter and it needs a type so it's a counter type int in this case and it starts at zero and then counter should always be less than num blocks and counter should be equal to uh, counter plus one and then we should do this and why do I have red lines? Did I miss something or is it just slow? It's just slow, good. So in here we can then start, this is in setup, so this is done, so the level is generated when we run setup, so this is just generated uh, once when we run the program it can generate some kind of basic level here. And the level should have some blocks, and we have blocks here, and I'm going to make a little bit more compressed version of your, what you have seen before. So blocks is going to be, I'm going to say, no I'm not, I'm actually going to do it the same way. So we're going to do it, make a temporary block, TMP block, that is a new block based on the block, oh, block class. And it's not plural, it's just a single block like that and then we are gonna say then the last thing we're gonna do in this is to add it to our array list of blocks so we're gonna say add temp block to the list here and then inside here we have the possibility to kind of design our level and we need to change that to a small one like that so the next thing is to position these blocks and right now I just want to see if it works so I'm just gonna say temp block dot and the x-axis is the width, so I'm going to space them equally. I'm going to say each block is going to be the counter times, I don't know, 50. So they are 50 wide. And then I'm going to say temp block dot width is going to be equal to a w, as we use for width. And that's going to be equal to 50. So they're going to be right beside each other all over the, uh, all, all, uh, all over the place. Now note what counter times 50 does. The first one will be at zero, the next one will be at 50, the next one will be at 100, 150, and so forth. This is how we use counter to make different x positions. Yeah, so for each for loop here, the counter will be, one, in the first one it will be zero, zero times 50 is zero, so it will be here, and the next one it will be one, that means once times 50, then it will be 50 out, and the next one it will be two, that's two times 50, that's 100 out, and then we'll draw it all over the screen like that. Um, then we need to have the Y position and I've wanted to be a little bit random here so it's something about height minus random and then some random number 0 and 50 and then I will say time block uh, height of the block is gonna be something safe so it just draws below the screen so you cannot see that I haven't figured out how high it should be like that so now I've actually generated my list of blocks. So this is generating our li my list of blocks, but it's not drawing anything. So I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not showing anything and I'm not asking it to draw. I'm only trying, asking the player to be shown and to be moved. And now I need to kind of show all the blocks. So I need to make a method within block that's called void show. And then I'm gonna say, okay, what is a block? That's a rectangle and it has an x and a y and a width and a height and then in here in the in here I'm gonna say I am have to loop through it again and draw each uh, block so I'm just gonna take the for loop again copy paste that in so I don't have to write it and then I'm gonna take the our blocks and then I'm gonna do a shorthand where I'm gonna say get get and get each object in the for loop by using the counter and then I'm gonna say dot and say show that means 
I'm going to run through each block in the list and ask that block, that block to be shown. And since that show refers to show within the block, this one, it's going to draw a rectangle. So now we should get some kind of level here with random heights. So now we're getting kind of the game here and we're kind of getting some different obstacles we have to kind of move over. And um, I think it's too easy. So I'm going to do 50, uh, 100 here, just to kind of give some more randomness. That didn't, oh, okay, so 0 to 100, is that better? Ooh. So now we have kind of some obstacles we can jump around on. Um, but right now we're not colliding with everything, so that's the next problem. That is, we have to figure out how to collide with everything, any, anything and kind of check up on that. And to do that, I need to, I think I need to introduce a new concept here of collision. Um, yeah. So to do that, we actually need to take our moving um, take our moving and move, uh, the moving has to be separated, so there's a move and a collision. And this is the collision part, this is where we collide with the bottom, we need to collide, we need to check specifically on a specific height if we have a collision. And to do that we need to make a new one called collision, and that one needs to have one uh, variable that it gets, that is the height of this object, where it starts to draw this one. So um, collision height, and uh, then we're gonna use, uh, uh, we're gonna call it the block height. It's not perfect, but it works. This is speed programming. So instead of using height, I'm gonna use block height and check for that one and then make it bounce on that one. But we're also gonna check if the ball is within the, the, the Y position. The, 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 so we have to check both width and height. Okay, so that's actually what we have to do with and height, and then we have to say this one is height, and then we have to check, you know, we have to figure out if the ball is in the same width of the, uh, if a block, it only has to check the collision here if the ball is in here. If the ball is here, it doesn't check the collision on this top block here. So to do this, we need to also check for, for the constraints of where is the ball. So to do that, I need to say uh, width should be greater than, so this is the, the width of the ball should be greater than, no, it should be, yeah, it should be greater than the starting point of the block. So this is not the, this is the width of the block. So now I have to think a little bit. So y, x, y, x, x should be greater than the width. And, ah, okay, I'm not perfectly right yet. So this is where I haven't done this before, so I have to figure out x core collision and y collision, and then we actually need the width as well. So this is the colliding object, we have the x and the y, this is the uh, point of this object here, and then we have the width of the object. So that's the three uh, variables I need to check for collision. So first we have the x and the y, so if y is greater than height, then y is equal to uh, y should be equal to the y collision of uh, the object. And then we have the x, which is x should be greater than the x collision. And we need to check that it's not too far out. So if this is the block, it's greater than and it's smaller than the right size side of the collision. So x should be smaller than the x call plus v call. So now I'm checking on both sides here to check if it collides with this one. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, not the last thing, the next thing is then to call collision and check if we actually have a collision for each block. So I have to check this for each block. And then I have to change a little bit in my code because here I have to say the player dot the collision and then I have to give the, the parameters from the, from the current block. So this one here, just to make it simple for you guys to understand, I'm going to say block, selected block, 
equals blocks because then I get it out as a selected block. I kind of pull it out of the array list and into a selected block because then I can say selected block dot show. So now I print the block and then I need the selected block and then I need to give it the x, the y position and the width position of the block. So say check that. And it didn't work. So we don't have any success yet. Then we have to figure out what went wrong here. X and Y and W. X, Y, W. So Y can strain line, but the op it goes the opposite what you want to strain line. Right? Why? Isn't it saying it has to be within the block? No. It's saying it has to be somewhere between zero and the Y position of the block. Oh. So that one is good enough. So now we are in a situation where it's really hard to debug. It's really hard to figure out what is going on here. So the x has to be greater than x, x column. So that's the width, x and y. And then it has to be, let's take this block here. So it has to be, x has to be greater. That's the player has to be greater than that. And then it has to be smaller than x has to be smaller than x, this x plus the v column. That sounds right. It looks right. I, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong right now. All right, so the only way to check this is start to kind of poke around in the system, and we can do that with print line and just write, we have a collision. So now we can see if, if we get that at least. And we don't. That means it never gets into here. So somehow this never renders true. If y is bigger than the y column, x column, and then we go back here and we say the player dot collision select block x and y and the width of the block. So now I just want to make sure that I didn't screw something up and I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't understand the variable. So I'm gonna just make an ellipse. Draw an ellipse to see what is going on at the x and y position here, if that's correct, if I'm missing something important here, and take 2020, because then I will get a little circle and that dot, and then I know if that is correct. Yeah, so it starts right there, so that is correct. And the width of the block, is that correct? I'm using the width, width and height, that is correct as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see, let's uh, say print line here and say hip and see if we just get into this, if I miss something there, I get into it, so that's not the problem. Then make, let's maybe be very lean on the collision detection and just do this and see what happens. Okay, so that works. That's the highest point. And that did the collision. So the highest block right now, it's colliding with the highest point. So that's correct. So we have to figure out why this part here is wrong. The x should be greater than the x collision. The x should be smaller than the x collision plus the v, the width of the column. What is wrong here? Can you see it? Nope. Mm. So if you move this. Are you possibly by chance hitting exactly on the edge? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the problem. OK, that's beautiful. OK, so here we have actually the essential part of why you should always say greater than and equal to something on some of these guys because we are in the situation where the ball is slightly going through that little tiny crack that's right there so we have to solve that okay so x should be greater than one of them just have to do it because else we get an overlap i think maybe both of them just to for looks actually it's the greatest one so actually, it would actually be nice to have, yeah, both of them. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so now we have something that actually works. This kind of error is very common, and in games it would mean you could fall out of the world and die, and sometimes it means a nuclear power station could explode down. So, here I have my level. I'm running around on the level. Uh, I cannot... Oh, I could. How did that... Okay, so I can actually move into the level and then I jump up. That's kind of crappy. That's not nice. So if I move to the side, I can actually kind of move into it. So there's some collision detection we have to do here to make sure I cannot do this. All right. So what is the simplest way? There's something, should we make collision detection on the sides? That might be the solution for it. To say, how do we do that? So if we moved into it, uh, what is a kind of a neat trick to do this? I would just leave it because it's not pedagogical enough. I actually agree with you. Then we can we can actually discuss it a little bit and find the perfect solution. I don't have the perfect solution for that. We can do a lot of hacks to kind of solve it, but I don't have the perfect solution. I think this is the perfect place to stop, except I had one more thing I wanted to do. Make the blocks move. That's what some of them do. Okay, so yeah, and I wanted to jump higher. So let's jump higher. Jump, and let's say 10, because then I can... Maybe that's too high. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, so we need the blocks to move. Oh, that's plenty. But you can play around with that. So this would be also a good example of why you need to do wish revisions or versions. So now we have something that works. Then I say uh, Command S and I say Shift Command S to save a new version. If I get access to the right window, say Command S. Command this. And then this processing here is not letting me do the, which is sometimes the shortcuts die on this computer. I don't know why. And then we call it uh, version two. All right, then we have the, the whole moving. We need to move the ball around and get to, when we get to the end of the screen, or somehow the world should be kind of translated. And there's multiple ways of doing this, so I have to think a little bit, I experiment a little bit, but one way to do that is to actually just translate your world. So what you say is you're actually shifting your coordinate system to say, all right, I want to shift it so my world is moving. And I don't remember if this is the way to do it, but let's try it out and see if it works. So in theory, I should be able to say translate, and the critical point is you have to do it the right spot and the right situation. I think this is actually right. Let's see. The player dot x, the player dot y, uh, not y, x, uh, x width, and the y should not be translated. Width, yeah, only the width. We are not going to do it in the height. We could do that, actually. That could be fun. Let's see. So this is opposite of what we want to do. It's kind of moving with me. Okay, so we have to find out that must be... What do we have to do then? How do we times one? Times one. Is that enough? I don't know. It might actually be. It's relative, so it might actually be. Yeah. So now I'm actually moving. There's something here where the ball is always on the edge, so we want to kind of move it in a little bit. So I don't know, plus hundred maybe or minus hundred. Yeah. So now the ball is kind of in the same position on the x-axis, but we're actually shifting our whole coordinate system. So 0, 0.0 moves out here and is actually here. And by doing that, when we draw it as we would, we, actually, we are actually seeing another part of the screen. And this can, of course, be done very elegantly, or it can be done like this. And now we are at the end of our world. So now there's nothing more left. So now we're just going to fall in. Oh.